So Josh, thanks for being part of the Mastermind series. Absolutely. Appreciate you having me. Of course. I've been really excited to talk to you. And I want to jump in with talking about you in particular. Um, you are the COO of a really cool company that we'll talk about in a minute, but I would love to know your history, where you started, because there's a lot there. Yeah, there absolutely is. Um, I guess it, it comes back to my childhood. I grew up in here in Provo, just down the street. Mm -hmm. And my dad was a serial entrepreneur. Uh, entrepreneur. He loved um, everything about businesses and starting businesses. And so I grew up watching him do everything. And he was a little bit of a daredevil. So those two combined, I think, really got me thinking towards being in business long term. Mm -hmm. And seeing him do backflips on skis and start new businesses, I, I just naturally said, okay, that's what I have to be and what I want to do. So even when I was uh, you know, third, fourth grade, he was uh, he opened a bakery in, in Foothill in Salt Lake City. And um, and then he uh, he worked as a general manager of Sailor One, and so he was he had a cell phone company that he had built and and worked with, and so I always had uh, I had some interesting phones back in the day when no one had phones, a big huge gray brick phone. Love it. <laughs> and then the flip phone that was like this big, right? So I'd take that to school, and no one knew what that was. That was fun. <laughs> but then um, you know throughout my childhood I, he just he did so many different things he he owned a snowmobile company and i was a snowmobile guide with him and uh, i got off a mission and he um he had a mortgage company and that was all new and and then uh now he's doing real estate so he has a real estate brokerage called rb brokerage here in provo so kind of fun and so seeing all that really got me excited and i, I got off a mission and i i opened a car dealership and it put me through college and I loved everything about it. You opened a dealership before you went to college. Uh, yeah, it was. It got me through. Uh, you know, two years of selling cars. I think I sold seventy-four cars, and I had a full-time job and going to school full-time. Oh goodness! And, but it was an experience. It helped me see that there's a lot that you can do, and even if you don't believe in yourself, mm -hmm. that you just go and do it. And being that that entrepreneur and a little bit of a daredevil, I just I, I kind of now get it because I wanted to be that. But you're you're essentially taking calculated risks, and those risks have a reward or uh, you know make it hard for you. And through those lessons, you you grow and you can become much better. Now we were talking with Scott Woolley last week, and you know he was saying that he's an angel investor. And it seems like he has a, just a string of successes, yeah. but he's like, no, like, there are so many failures. And he was more excited to talk about the failures because, you know, that's the part where he really grew the most. And I would imagine that starting something like a car dealership and calculated risk that you just talked about, there has to be failures within that. How do you, Josh, navigate those failures so that you have to inevitably keep going, right? Exactly. And it's really funny because I didn't, I, I wouldn't embrace the failure early on in my career. Um, and I, I started hearing people like, uh, last year I heard Case Lawrence talk about circus tricks and how he completely failed, but that, that brought him to the point of being successful with his mm -hmm. company. And early on I would say, oh, okay, no, that, I, I didn't fail, I didn't fail, I didn't fail. And I didn't learn from those failures. And lately, now I, I embrace every single piece that I do wrong. <laughs> it's always an opportunity to, to recap, okay, here's what didn't go right. Uh, whether it's personal and business, it's entrepreneurship, you figure out now it's much easier to say, okay, I'm not going to ever do that again. And this is going to take me to the next level because I understood uh, I failed in education and now I'm at this point. Love it. And then, so you went to UVU, mm -hmm. and we just talked about it's one of the fastest growing, it is the fastest growing university here in Utah. And then from there, what happened? So uh, my, my dad talked about um, insurance, and I always go back to my dad. He's my hero. So, you know, I, I really like who he is and who what he stands for. Um, and he said, I think you should maybe get into insurance. They're always golfing, you know, agents and... Uh, and I loved golf, and so I thought, yeah. So I went and I moved down to St. George. I became a producer for the state of Utah and managed an insurance agency. 
And that, that actually brought me to the next step um, in my career in um, Access Point, a company here in Lehigh. Mm -hmm. And um, it was at the time, it was 2006, and you know about it, I've heard on your podcast that you had, you had a house here in this area. It was, it was the high rise in Lehigh on the west side of the freeway yeah. on the third floor, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there wasn't anything else around. There was one gas station and um, we were this little tech company at Access Point and I came on as an account manager and was doing insurance um, for the company as well. We had a, a product that we worked with. And I remember seeing on the wall at one point this uh, poster and it had a bunch of companies and it said Silicon Slopes. And that was way back in 2008. And I thought, yeah. we, we're going to be on that. We, we need to be on that. I can't believe we're not on that poster, right, at that time. And um, that, that really, the, the three years at Access Point, and it's funny because Andrew Smith was the CEO of that company. And so I worked really hard for three years. I think we went to lunch one time. We didn't see each, uh, each other very much. Um, but he knew I could take on a lot and that I was willing to do whatever it took. And I'd, I'd come in the office at 6 a.m. and, you know, leave late and try to make things happen. And I'd raise my hand for any opportunity to travel and work with clients. We had clients like um, Trump and the Maloof brothers that own the Palms. Oh, and wow. so it was really fun. Like nationwide, we we're all over the place. And just it was going crazy. So it was it was so fun to see true leadership in that aspect and in that setting. Now, in terms of, you know, Andrew started Access Point and then he starts in 2008, mm -hmm. he starts this company called Four Food Groups. And there's a little story, he and his wife, Shauna, yeah. started the company and it had to do with a local favorite, Neaters. Yeah. Can you tell that story? Oh, it's, it's actually a really good one. So Shauna uh, and Andrew were going out for their anniversary. Mm -hmm. And Shauna said, um, you know, let's go out and eat. And Andrew said, all right, I'll take you wherever you want to go. Let's go eat. And she said, I want to go to Neater's. And he was like, Neater's? No, no, I'll take you to any <laughs> restaurant. It's our anniversary, wherever right. you want to go. And she said, yeah, let's go to Neater's. And so he started thinking, oh, no, that has something. If she could go anywhere for this meal and she wants to go to Neater's, there's something about that. And they got involved and opened the first Lehigh. It was the, the first Four Foods Group you know, store, basically. And Shauna was working behind the cash register and making things happen. And um, it, it was, you know, Andrew, for Andrew, it was fun. He was putting you know, something into another business and see if he could grow it. And, and uh, it obviously turned into something more yeah, than just a little <laughs> bit <laughs> more than just the Lehigh location, right? And for those who don't know, what is Four Food Groups? Okay, so Four Foods Group is um, it's a restaurant management company, mm -hmm. and essentially um, we're the back end, all the support that makes it happen for the restaurants that we own and manage. Um, so we're doing everything from uh, insurance, payroll. Uh, workers comp right all of that um, all the aspects facility management marketing anything that would be in a store um, for a restaurant we're trying to pull that away so that you can focus on customers and the experience and what what it looks like and so we're taking that off of the general managers plate so that they can do what they do best and that's make a difference right I mean, I think of that in two two things because we talk about like the experience economy. Any more businesses, especially restaurants, have to provide a really great experience. It's not just about pushing food yeah. and getting a check. But then the other side is I know with restaurants it's really hard margin wise to make a profit and to do really well. Right. As a as a, a business owner in a restaurant or a general manager, you, you go in in the morning and you're hiring and you're firing and you're making decisions and you're doing uh, everything and it gets to 6 p.m. at night and you want to go home. You don't want to handle payroll and taxes and insurance. So we pull that away and that's what that's what the secret sauce of Four Foods Group is. So at what point did you come on board as COO? Okay, so um, I'm working at um, Access Point mm -hmm. and, and Andrew says, hey, let's go build restaurants. And I had seen over the past three years what Andrew could do. 
And I said, absolutely, count me in. I'll go anywhere it is that you want to take this plane, right? It's, it's been a rocket ship at Axis Point. Let's go do that. And so uh, it was Andrew and I uh, in his basement for about two years, and we were back to back. And that, that education, Andrew had bought and sold three businesses. He's a successful CEO. And uh, here I am, you know, wanting to be an entrepreneur and wanting to be more. And so for two years, hearing every conversation and seeing how he does things in, in this, you know, basement uh, of his house, we got things going and it was so fun because we'd, we'd go out and we'd build stores and we we're physically in the stores working, cons- you know, making it all happen. And then we'd go and do training for all the employees and we'd work really hard. And then late at night, we'd go do all the back end work. And so we did that through years and years of doing that to get to the point where we are today. And so it's a little bit different, but it's still the same. And is there, I've talked to a number of, you know, CMO, CEO, COOs that have said the same thing, but surprisingly, they were part of one company that was thriving and it was kind of in that enterprise level and everything was all cylinders firing. And they purposely chose something that was more startup, which I find fascinating. Yeah. Because you are putting yourself in a position where I mean, you're starting at like that that base, ba- literally basement level. <laughs> right, exactly right. I mean, was there any point where that enthusiasm dipped for you, or you're like, what am I doing? <laughs> I remember telling people, yeah, I'm gonna go. We're gonna go do restaurants, and they're like, mm, I don't think that's a good choice, <laughs> you know. And um, and I, you know, I I looked at it and went. I, when I was younger, I said, oh, I'm never gonna work in restaurants. I thought I was maybe too good for it. But now I would tell anyone to go and turn 16, 17 and go work in a restaurant. It'll teach you how to talk to people and be responsible. And those are the values that we're trying to provide in our stores. Mm-hmm. Um, really being a part of the community, building people up, getting them to the next level. We know that employees might not be with us forever, but if we can be a stepping stone in their progression to become a doctor or to become whatever they want to be, uh, that's a big deal for us. That's what we're always looking for. Now, you're 10 years into it at this point. Yeah. Oh, that's probably surprising. Uh, it is, yeah. <laughs> to look back, I'm sure that time sped by. What were some of the milestones that for you were just you know, instrumental in just morale or, or whatever? Yeah, I, I, um, I look back and I remember we opened, I think it was our seventh or eighth store. Um, it was in Ogden. And we were up there um, staging the store, getting it ready, doing what we you know, do, and that's work hard. And we received a, a notification, a letter, and we opened it up together as a team. We're this small little team. And we were, uh, we made the Inc. 500 list. And that was a long time ago, you know, seven years ago. And um, that was such a pivotal point. And it's like, whoa, this is working. This is really fun. And it was, for me, I, I love, as CEO, I, I love the experience every day of something new and the fires that come. That That's what makes it so exciting for me. And so to see that, you know, we were doing something that we had set out to do, um, that was a big deal. So that a huge milestone. Um, another piece was um, when we bought 48 Little Caesars in, in Alabama and Louisiana. And that was an absolute shift. We had, had just been focusing on needers directly. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden we're um, trying to manage another thousand employees across the United States. Um, a whole nother division, a whole nother um, office that we're taking care of. And what that looked like trying to onboard a thousand employees, it was it was like all hands on deck and flew out and just made it happen. But another pivotal point in Four Foods Group's history and success. And, and now to look back and go, whoa, we actually accomplished that too. What's next? Mm-hmm. Now, in terms of a Little Caesars, so they've been operational for a long time before mm-hmm. you came into the picture. Were there any like points of conflict that you had to overcome? It's being like, okay, we're your new management? Right. Well, um, for us, we, we looked at the Illich family, who are the founders of Little Caesars, and their, their values really drove our decision to make mm-hmm. that happen. And so we came in going, um, well, whatever they say to do, they've been in it 50 years. Let's just do that. As a franchisee, let's follow their lead. Let's find the success in what they're doing. 
And so we, we went into Alabama and Louisiana and, um, you know, we, we tried to apply our culture and that was, we work hard, we're positive and we, we really just go out there and make things happen. Right. So, um, I feel like we've done a really good job allowing the employees there in the office down in our Alabama location to succeed, to make a difference. And, um, you know, it's fun to hear the success stories that are coming out of, you know, a company, you know, states and states away and uh, seeing what they can do. It's, it's pretty fun. That's huge. Yeah. Uh, we, we talked to Rachel from Chatbooks and she mentioned her five points of a star that they right. hire against, that they work against, that they fire against. And what you're saying with that alignment of values before you even, you know, jumped on board with this company is, I mean, if you do that, then everything else should just be by the book. You know, you don't have to navigate these ups and downs. You don't have to correct all of these problems internally. And I wonder if as many people understand that, that alignment of values, Mm -hmm. as in you have to know what your values are. Right. And I don't know if, if... as many people know how to define those. Right, in Four Foods Group, we, we've really defined it um, as competency, humility, integrity, and positivity. So those That's four awesome. things. And um, you see the people who have succeeded, and we maybe we didn't know that's what we were looking for in the beginning, but it's very evident now that those, those qualities really make up who the employees are at Four Foods Group. And so we look at that and, and go, our, our CEO, Andrew, he always says um, positivity breeds success. That's his thing. And um, it's so fun to have because you, you start with that, that positivity and that mindset. You really can accomplish so much doing that. And the employees that come on now, they just, they get it. They, they want to be a part of that. And we know if they have that drive and they are trying to do those things, that we can help them succeed. We can get them to where they're um, loving coming to work on Monday mornings at 7 or 8 a.m., right? And and that's the biggest deal, setting someone in a position that, that they can reach towards their goals and use their talents, and that's all we do. Okay, you may not be good here. Let's adjust, put someone else there, and you go to the moon with what you are talented with. That, that has a huge, I mean, impact. I don't know, Josh, saying that positivity, because Andrew, I imagine, you know, he's a business mind. Yeah. And so you think with a business mind that you have to be very scrutinizing, and with that is probably a little skeptical. Mm-hmm. And so you have this different idea, but the idea of positivity, like being able to hold that positivity, it's things like you know you'll get your needs met you you learn to articulate what those needs are and what those wants are and to breed that i i don't know why but that is like a huge like truth bomb yeah i, guess. <laughs> I love it <laughs> i mean just simple as that is positivity in every single relationship you have yeah and that that carries and to and to next. see people change i mean over the years um shauna has been a part of this the whole time right and she's our, our president now um to see how that influenced her as well. That it, Andrew's always that way. He's always preaching about the pro- positivity, and um, and now Shauna's taken on this role that she's incredible. What she's doing is is groundbreaking in in the industry. You know, as as a um, a woman in leadership in the restaurant industry, there's not a lot, and really? um, she's taking Four Foods Group to the next level. Love it. Now, your role as COO. At what point did you? start forming your team hiring uh it was from from the beginning it was always a needs based we Mm -hmm. we'd say okay we we need a facility management person right to help uh, fix all the stores the building the equipment instead of going out and paying someone third party and so i'd find someone that that i really could work with and then all of a sudden there was two and three and then you know now there's 15 right and so you look at all of those divisions that that um, have been put in place the process and the structure of it it all grew from one person and and that's so fun to be in in a place where you have that ability within a startup to a mid-sized company to where we are today we have 5200 employees and it's it's a lot to take but every single one of those employees still have the opportunity to change what we're doing, to create a new division, to do more. 
Um, when we uh, we created the, we call it our POPs team, but it's people operations and their talent acquisition. And so we, we started with one employee and he's just been a rock star, fantastic. And he brought on someone that is amazing as well and another person. And, and so that now you have this, this division that came from nowhere. I mean, it was a need, we built it, and now it, it thrives. Mm -hmm. How, what do you identify when you have to hire someone? And I imagine in your situation, it's pretty fast. You need someone as soon as, you know, the need opens up. Yeah. Do you have a formula or do you spy certain things? Yeah. You're like, yeah, not only will they be a good worker, but they'll be a good cultural fit or... So things. being in this Silicon Slopes right arena and growing up in Provo, mm -hmm. I have a pretty good network and I've always relied on other people being able to come up with who should be in For Foods Group. Mm -hmm. And I get hit up a lot like, hey, you should hire this person because they're XXX, right? That whatever it is, um, there's there's so many things that now I can pull from. And I'm not necessarily saying we have a position, hope I can fill it. It's, okay, five people have told me this other person is fantastic. I need to be looking at them. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a different position to be in as a company when people really want to work for your company and they want to be a part of something that they can make a difference in. You, you I don't know, that you have a lot of opportunity that way. And in terms of your leadership style, mm -hmm. I'm really curious about how you lead. Yeah, I, I um, just being, operationally minded, I tend to work with my teams. And it's always been that way from the beginning. And and so I, I don't see it any different. You know, if um, last night <laughs> uh, I went into the office and one of my guys was um, working and so it, it was pretty late and I saw that he was there and so I just started working with him, right? So that that's kind of an example of, of who we are and we just make it happen that way. I'm super patient and um, and I love negotiating. And so contracts and vendors and that kind of thing. And that that's maybe my favorite thing is just outlasting anyone who's trying <laughs> to get in for Foods Crew. And um, people get so frustrated because I'm, I'll just wait a long time to get exactly what I want. But when I get it, it is exactly what I want. I love that. I feel the positivity that you have. So. Um, whether that was just growing up with your dad or mm -hmm. just hanging out with Andrew. Um, but I, I love that you seem so unruffled. <laughs> like, I think it would take a lot to ruffle your feathers. So that, that's um, me getting old. <laughs> <laughs> really, um, early on, I, oh, I got ruffled, that's really? for sure. And, um, and, and now, uh, you know, the fires don't seem like fires anymore. Mm. They're just... Another thing that happened and an opportunity to become better and um, uh, and uh, taking the ability to help someone grow through an experience and seeing them succeed, right? Learn from their failures. Yeah. So really life slowed down in that aspect. It's it's not so crazy and um, you know, things don't seem so bad. And I, I think that's true in life. I mean, you get older and you know, if you got, uh, you know, you had a breakup when you were young, it was devastating, right? Right, yeah. And so now you, you kind of get to the point where you go, okay, that was really hard and um, we'll fix it. We'll figure it out. And we have a talented team who has that ability to do that. Mm -hmm. And so I rely heavily on that team to make that happen. Love it. I think that's what you provide to, like in mentorships, it's that idea of, I don't have enough experience, so this seems so devastating, but Josh over here seems pretty <laughs> casual, cool, so I'll follow his lead. Yeah. He might have experienced this before, so, yeah. you know. In restaurant, I think we've experienced everything. Probably. <laughs> fire drill after fire oh, drill, yeah. right? <laughs> it's true. Now, in terms of, um, you know, how, how you would advise someone who was in a role that was maybe not a good fit for them. Mm -hmm. Like, how would you approach that? Yeah, we've we've had that a lot in Four Foods Group. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what we try to do is sit down and, and find out what their ultimate goals are and what they love and then help maybe tell them some of the things that we see they're great at 
and then form that foundation that allows them to succeed long term and, and say, okay, you know, maybe we're going to pull back on this one, but we have this blue sky over here. Do you want to go and be the director of construction? And, you know, a lot of the times they're going, yeah, that's exactly what I want. And you say, go do it, you know, figure it out. And uh, let's, let's fail along the way and let's get better at it and let's build a team around you. And um, giving, giving people that ability I, it makes such a big difference. I had my director of HR walk in um, yesterday and she told me about working with the University of Utah Healthcare, um, all this upper management. And for her, it's so important to um, provide tons of value to our employees. And she's an advocate for them. She's not an HR, she's, she's um, I don't know, she's trying to be um, just a friend to all of our employees and help them through their, their trials and their struggles. And I love what she's doing that way. It makes such a big difference. But I could be, oh, don't go do that, don't focus on that. But I love what, what it is. She's thinking outside the box and that gives me the opportunity to then learn through what she's passionate about and go, okay, maybe we have an opportunity to change our healthcare system and to work towards something new just by listening to what she's passionate about. Mm -hmm. And that's where my education comes from is all these employees who, they do amazing things. You just have to sit back and listen to what they're doing. Now we talk a lot about culture and I think it's something that is very trendy to yeah. talk about, even yeah. though we've talked about it for a long time because you can throw it out but I think defining it more clearly, that's what you're doing mm -hmm. in terms of it's not just, we like to laugh about the ping pong table. Yeah. Like once you have a ping yeah. pong table, you have an <laughs> awesome culture, right? Exactly. <laughs> you have it dialed. Ours is folded up in the warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> so you have one, but there's so much more to it than that. And maybe talk more about that in terms of, you just said listening, just the art of listening. Yeah. That's pretty key. Yeah, um, I, I've always been an, an advocate um, for something that I guess I learned over time, right? So it was um, early on, all I did is followed what Andrew would do. Mm -hmm. And so I, I essentially became the first follower. And I've, I've kind of um, made that what culture is. And, and that's following someone who sees a clear vision is a is a master at putting together what that could look like for everyone. And what we try to do is just follow that vision. And that, that really allows people to then go, okay, I have my own vision, but I can contribute to that bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And you allow them to do that. I think that's brilliant. We talk about very similar, the, the first follower, that really is leadership. Yeah. Cause otherwise you have someone doing something and no one's following, Absolutely. so. <laughs> but we also talk about we're being under the same blue sky, I guess is what we call it. Hmm. That for our, you know, for Wayne, our COO, and Chris, our CEO, you know, we have just a small leadership team that would we speak to the same values and the same principles as if they were in the room. Absolutely. With all well, of, you know, our people. Obviously, we're willing to manage up we're willing to approach conflict. We're willing mm -hmm. to be like, hey, this needs to happen. You know, Wayne, come on. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but the idea is that we, we are under the same blue sky. And you do that so well with Andrew. Like you're not worried about, well, you know what? I need to make sure I'm carving out my own little path here, mm -hmm. you know, blazing a trail. Well, it's really funny. We're, we're so different. He's this um, type A and he walks into a room and everyone turns to see who he is, right? And I'm, I'm an introvert, right? And early on in my career, all I ever wanted to be was 6'5", walk in a room, everyone sees, right? And I thought that's what success was. Right. Um, and what I learned over time is, is that um, I don't have to be that to be successful. And I started um, realizing that the first time that, that I realized that was when um, I was with Andrew and he told me, um, you're a leader. And I didn't believe it at that time because I'd gone through sports and school and scouts and uh, a mission and, and I'd never really been in leadership positions. I think because I was more reserved and very cautious and, and just 
yeah, I, I wasn't vocal and loud. Um, but when he said that, I started going, I am? Okay, how, how, how why, what do I do? And, and I started looking out, um, I listened to Fraser Bullock um, talk about being an introvert. And all of a sudden I was like, you're a leader. You were with Mitt Romney, you did the Olympics and you were COO. Oh, I could be that too. And that, that was really a big change in me. And, and now I embrace that. I double down on that strength. And I'm, I know I'm an introvert, I know who I am, and I'm going to like use it to my best ability. Yeah, I'm an introvert as well. <laughs> but it, it's that, that quiet resilience, the one who carries the banner, like that puts things into motion. I mean, that's, that's where I thrive Love in that. terms of everything. Yeah. Don't have to be the loud, do not want to be the loudest one <laughs> <Exactly>. in the room. <laughs> yeah. But I do think there's, you know, people start paying attention when you're the one who's more contemplative. Mm-hmm. They're like, Josh, what do you think about that? <laughs> I'm really curious. Well, and I always, I think I bring a different view to the table and it's, it's definitely out that. there for yeah. the most point. You yeah. know? Everyone's going, mm, I don't know about that, <laughs> but we have fun. And, and that's the great part about Four Foods Group. Um, positivity breeds success and best idea wins. Those are kind of the two drivers. And so we, we hear from everyone and uh, kind of come up with, all right, what is the best idea and how do we all f- get behind that idea and move forward? What is next for you? Yeah. Um, you know, in, in 2012, um, I was asked in an interview, you know, what, what's Four Foods Group going to be and what's next for you? And, and I said, I want Four Foods Group to be a household name in the Western United States. And that was my quote, right? Mm-hmm. Um, next for me is, is progression of building my talents. And I, I love what I'm doing. Every day I come to work and I'm excited for waking up because there's so much to do. And um, I really think we can take on the world with Four Foods Group and for me, it's it's just finding joy in what I'm doing every day. And I'm absolutely grateful for that opportunity. Um, it, was, it was pretty interesting, 2000, I think it was 11, we were opening the Leighton Eaters. And like I said, we, we'd been building stores and so we were part of the process of staging and getting it up and going. Um, and I was in the walk-in box and it was dirty. We needed to clean it up before our grand opening. I remember scrubbing it from ceiling to floor and it was like wax on, wax off, right? And by the time I was done, I was so tired. Like I could barely move my arms and uh, I was kneeling on that that floor in a walk-in box, like, you know, this big metal refrigerator. And um, I was so thankful for my position. I was so thankful I had a job. And I think that that carries on today. I mean, 10 years later, essentially, you know, I, I started there in 2009. Um, but but 10 years later, I'm looking at it going, I'm still so thankful. I'm thankful I have a job and I'm able to provide for my family. And, and um, you know, I want the values that that I want to see and, and you know, that legacy type, um, it, for me, it's it's really about doing what, like I've talked about my dad, doing what he does and he's humble and he's honest and people love being around him. I'm just trying to build off of his legacy and hopefully my kids are gonna follow that too. Yeah, I mean, that's that's my last question is, Josh, what is your legacy? <laughs> so you may have just answered it, but maybe reiterate what that is. Yeah, I, um, that, that legacy for me is is being responsible and when I promise something, being able to fulfill on that. And, um, you know, one, one of the greatest people I know, and I don't know him real well, but all the times I've been around him, his name is Rick Fulkerson here in Utah. And he, he's over Keys to Success and he's doing great things for a foundation for the children in our schools and Code to Success. Um, but every time I'm around him, all I hear from him is like, Josh, thank you so much. Thank you, you just, you're so great. And I just love who those type of people are when they just are appreciative of and grateful and have gratitude for the things that they have. That's what I want. I, I wanna be like that. I'm not there, but I hope to get there one day. I, that's an amazing legacy. Thank you so much. This has been such a fun conversation and getting to know you more. And I hope to get to know 
Andrew and Shauna right. and I mean, more of your team because they all sound pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do it a lot. Yeah, yeah. So thank you again. Thanks for having me.